and this is kind of a negative one, but the old school fitness genre depends on people buying, subscribing, and not showing up. That's the reality yeah. of the game. Today we have Gregory here. I'm really excited about this episode because it dives into the fitness space, a bunch of interesting stuff to learn from Gregory. Just a recap of Gregory, he's niched down in a crowded fitness space to focus on kettlebell training, nutritional coaching and weight loss. And we dive into how he's used online coaching, live YouTube sessions, and a bunch of other ways to grow his business online. That happened later. That happened thanks to thanks to the pandemic. We we had you know even before the pandemic, I was always interested in kettlebells and I always followed Steve Carter. Steve Carter is one of the pivotal people of kettlebell training and kettlebells in the Western part of the world. He and Pavel, or at least Pavel is the most well known. Pavel Satsulin, the most well known kettlebell guy, and Steve Carter. He was working with him, and then they split ways and. Uh, I was getting coaching from him and we certified in his certificates, his coaching certificates in June 2019. And that was another pivotal moment of my career because then I was starting, I was just starting to dig down into kettlebells even more intensively. And when COVID hit, this was the pandemic. I, you know, I have to be careful when I say this, but I have to be grateful that to some extent that this happened because mm. this led to us honing in on kettlebell training and nice. that's now the primary focus and even now with this year even at the end of 2020 when even this thing got even worse you know it, the pandemic hit then in switzerland it was crazy then all lockdown then the summer it went back to normal almost and then mm. in autumn it went crazy again uh, i think almost uh, at every place place in the world yeah and and the second lockdown, the second wave, is when we started these live workouts. We were, we were doing these live workouts on YouTube always, but we mm -hmm. started to focus on these live workouts even, even more. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing where I think, we, we, that's another milestone. We hit the 10,000 subscriber mark by the end of December. Mm -hmm. And now we're seeing it's it's crazy. YouTube's recommending this stuff like like it's nuts. It's it's yep. the best the best place you want to be in when you're on YouTube. I was uh, prior to this, uh, prior to the second wave and the second lockdowns. We were just doing everything. We were doing body weights, then some dumbbells, then mo and mostly kettlebells. We had the, the focus on the kettlebell, but we were doing mm -hmm. some dumbbells on body weight because people were like, well, I don't, have I don't have kettlebells. Can you help us out? We were like, yeah, we'll help us out, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And then I realized y you want to be the best at one thing. You want to be the expert of one thing. You want to invest your whole time, your whole energy, dedicate everything that you have, all the resources or sources in this one particular thing. And that was the kettlebell. So I realized now we're doing live workouts only with the kettlebell. And even the content, you know, the content, that's a strategy of YouTube that I'm having. The content brings people in just, you know, how, how to how to work with kettlebells. For example, one, one video that really took off was a reaction to Joe Rogan. Then another mm -hmm. video that took off was just uh, trying to uh, top three exercises for kettlebell beginners. And then they start subscribing. And then the, the, the live workouts are now one of the pivotal systems that keeps the YouTube channel afloat because it's way easier for me to do these live workouts than it is to keep pushing out content in that regular uh, time and space, right? Yep. So so that was the, the pivotal moment was switching to kettlebells only and upgrading production quality. You know, we're still, and I, I have to mention this, we're still depending on our life coaching in real life, about 80, 80% is still mm -hmm. the, the, the coaching with real people. So okay. I believe this is not something that's gonna, that, that's gonna disappear. However, I see down the line that the future, you know, knocks on the door, so, and we just had, and this morning I, I had a kettlebell class with somebody from Berlin, mm -hmm. via Zoom, and, wow. uh, 
and and Angie's now doing the regular online coaching, which also draws in somebody from Germany. And I think the biggest struggle is, first of all, just branching out into the online world. Because most people in the fitness industry are just gym owners generally. They're old school, like you mentioned, they're old school. Mm-hmm. They're not into new stuff or they say, well, this is not, you know, they, they laugh it off or they think it's not worth it. Mm-hmm. That's one thing, trying to overcome your old school mentality that maybe something new is knocking on your door and maybe you have to start working with it. Then the second obstacle that, that's in the way that I'm seeing is technical problems. Mm. Technical problems can make you go nuts. Hundred <laughs> percent. I'm in the yeah. same boat. Maybe one of the biggest obstacles that I believe exists is, and this is kind of a negative one, mm-hmm. but it's the fitness industry, and I'm. I'm not speaking for everybody. I know a lot of good coaches and there's a lot of people who mean well and who are very talented in what they do. But the old school fitness genre depends on people buying, subscribing and not showing up. That's the reality of the game. Statistics are clear. Yeah, well, I think that's what like regular gyms are kind of built off, aren't they? Yes. They sort of try and get as many people in board and they know that only 20% of people are going to show up five yes. days a week yes. and they make all their profit on the guys that show up like once a month. There's even a statistic that says some gyms only survive because of the money they generate in January. So you have to imagine wow. how, how the pandemic is existential or how, how this crisis yeah. may be existential or may really, really cause huge problems for for businesses or for fitness and gym chains and all that kind of stuff it's just you know you create your blue ocean right it's the blue ocean that Mm. you're creating where you're the expert in not the red not Mm. the red ocean where everybody's having a race to the bottom because they are selling to the same client offering the same services Mm -hmm. so Drilling down and understanding, like you said, you can't reinvent what's already happened. And even uh, I think Tomska is his name. That's a YouTuber. He said, "You know what your pers- you know what your style is. Your style is a mixture of so many styles. You copy and steal from so many people that it's unrecognizable. That's your style. Mm. Mm. Mixing it all together. Yeah. And one hundred percent." It's, it's, and and you have to be open, man. You you have to be open-minded to really engage in that online stuff.